I'm just going to give you a quick rundown on installing the pumps into the Autosports Engineering triple fuel pump hanger for the IS300, GS300, uh, Risto slash uh, Altezza. Um, it's a pretty simple unit, single cavity, up to three pumps. The standard fittings we give you are pretty much set up for the larger Walbros, the uh, Hellcat 525, the 485, the 450s those pumps, uh, they carry inch and a half bodies and then the lower bases are a little bit larger with a turbine impeller for the higher flow. Um, just a brief overview. Um, this is a standard six pin uh, connector. This allows for individual wiring of each pump versus a lot of other uh, hangers that you might see. You have to share grounds or share signals. This allows you to actually run individual relays properly supplying the amount of voltage and amperage that each of the high flow pumps require. And then we have a pass-through sealed connector, which is all you need to set up the, uh, the float assembly. Um, now, it's a 90 degree bulkhead. We supply you with a set of pins, uh, the clips, the seals, the locks in a hardware package. I'm not gonna go over that because that's simple wiring. If you don't know how to wire it, you might want to take it to a shop or have someone that's actually familiar with 12 volt wiring and relays take care of that end of it for you. But as far as the rough installation, um, there are no compression clamps or anything on these. The unique bracket that we use is actually a nice precision fit. You can see it's it's pretty tight fit. So these don't come out once they're in there, but they're still free with some pressure to slide up and down. Now, you're going to have to pretty much orient these things how you need them, uh, because it's a little tricky with multiple pumps and such a small cavity inside your uh, fuel pump assembly with this. Uh, obviously, your factory uh, unit was not designed to hold two pumps, much less two of these much larger pumps. Um, typically, what I end up doing is you can grab any two slots they're open. Slide the pumps up just enough to grab, leave enough room. Now you might want to say to yourself, now you're like, well, how do I get these to go on because they're really close to the fittings? Well, that's why we give you the really nice, uh, unique uh, flex hoses. These are all E85 compliant. They won't kink on uh, their even extreme angles because they're convoluted. So they operate as a flex, so you can actually get to a really tight uh, bend on these and you won't get any kinking in there, which is why we supply these versus standard uh, fuel holes. Because in order for you to get these things to go on, what you're gonna end up doing is pretty simple. For instance, this pump's here. So what I'm gonna do is I'll remove it real quick. They'll go on and then you'll use the supply clamps, but they're actually designed for you to actually do uh, loops. So when you do these loops like this, you're actually able to take up for the excess uh, or the limitation in space that you have. So basically you wrap it around, create a loop that takes up the excess hose going to go ahead and slide them back into the assembly and now you loop up and under and right to your bar connections and as you can see that one's looped underneath comes up, comes down, goes back up to the bar connection, you attach the, your hose clamps. Now, the pumps seem to slide on a little bit easier. The larger brass uh, hose barbs, sometimes what I do is you actually start off the whole process, go boil some water, put it in a coffee cup or something. You can actually drop these hoses down into the cup for a few minutes, like two or three minutes, and they'll soften up a little bit and it actually allows you to slide them onto the hose barbs easier. So. Once you loop both of these hoses uh, to each hose bar, you basically you'll clamp them down and that's it, you're ready to go. 
Now from your factory pump assembly, you're going to reuse two components. You need the original uh, siphon jet, which obviously this is where the return uh, will be hooked up. This is the one that had the hose that was pre-existing on your stock pump assembly. So you basically split it down the side with a razor blade or a knife carefully so you don't touch your hand or your finger. And then this is kind of, there's no specific mounting point. There, I don't really see it necessary, but you will reuse this. The one trick to reusing this is that with smaller pumps, like if you have a full, the smaller AEMs or DWs or a 255, what'll happen, you probably won't overpower the uh, Venturi that's in here. As soon as you put in these bigger pumps, if you look inside the middle uh, barb, you'll see a small Venturi. That basically creates enough vacuum so that the siphon will pull from the other side of your saddle tank. Now, with the bigger pumps, you'll basically end up pushing fuel uh, completely over to the low side of the tank, unless you drill that hole open. Typically, I tell people to start with a three millimeter uh, opening, but the easiest way to test it really is uh, start with three mil, you can step it up from there, and once you actually are able to see that your fuel level is being siphoned from the opposite side of the tank, then you're pretty much set. The reason I can't tell you an exact one is because there's a variety of combinations because it'll depend on the size of the return you use, it'll depend on your uh, static pressure at your fuel pressure regulator, and also it depends on your pumps. I've had guys use one stock pump and then one big pump, like a 255, and then I have guys that use a 450. It's, it varies. The easiest thing is to slowly step it out because I cannot and will not be able to give you a specific uh, orifice size or drill bit to drill that out without, you know, experimenting with those types of pumps. And like I said, it will change based on your static pressure. If you're running uh, 40, it's going to be different from when you're running uh, 45 versus when you're running 50. And everybody likes to do their own thing. And same thing, depending on if you're using a dash eight or a dash six fuel return line, that will also uh, vary on the size of the orifice that needs to be in here. But don't remember, if you run into a problem where you're filling up your low side tank, then more than likely you, you forgot to do this. A simple, easy fix. Um, that's installed in a similar manner, just like these. So you take the longer 516 hose that's supplied in the kit, that'll attach just like factory. Except for we're gonna to go to the return fitting, which is the one that's all the way on the outside. That one, you will get a smaller hose bar. You'll notice it's smaller. It's a 516 versus a 38 for the other two. And you'll essentially attach that on there. Like I said, it's a little bit difficult just because right now I have, I didn't dip this in any, any hot water, but. You'll be able to loop that under And in a lot of cases, what I usually do is you can use one of the pre, the other lines that you already installed. And we can use a tie strap. And there you see it. Came off the return, looped up right to the factory siphon, and we attach it to one of the other uh, hoses and barbs that's already there. And that's it. Those are your connections. That's pretty much it. You will have to, like I said, rotate these a little bit because depending on how your lines are oriented and the other such. And then the last piece is going to be your float assembly, which we have a little billet bracket are threaded. You're supplied with two composite screws. Yeah. And your float assembly will float. Make sure you double check this. You shouldn't have any interference. The float should be able to go up and down freely. If there is some binding you want, make sure that you're, the pin 
or the end of the shaft that sticks through the rear is actually clearing the bracket properly. And once it, once you have free form movement, uh, it's pretty much ready to go. You can clamp everything together, secure the rest of the lines, make it as compact as possible, and that's it, you're ready to go. Um, now two pumps, as you can see, you have enough of a little bit of an air gap in between them, they're not really touching. Um, but two pumps will fit in the, in the tank assembly during the installation process with no modifications. If you're using three pumps, what's going to happen is your opening is about the diameter of maybe, I think, like 40 thou uh, smaller than three of these pumps if they were actually touching each other uh, in a little triangular shape. So what's going to happen is in order to get three pumps in, you're going to have to get a pair of uh, vice grips or larger pliers, uh, channel locks, and grab the edge, the very lip of the fuel tank assembly and just pry it all the way around uh, minute um, you're looking for less than an eighth of an inch more additional opening and once you do that the three pumps will be able to drop down into the tank just fine uh, it doesn't require any cutting or grinding that's the easiest way to do it you can do it with a pair like I said a pair of vice grips or channel locks uh, the bigger the better because it gives you a little bit more leverage uh, you're not trying to like wrench a huge amount of area it's literally by the time you go all the way around, you'll have you'll open it up enough where three pumps will drop in. That's only necessary for three pumps. Two pumps, one pump, no mods necessary. Remember that. Um, that's a general overview. Like I said, I'm not going over anything wiring related. Uh, if you don't have experience with 12 volt wiring and relays, uh, go get it done by somebody else. Um, you also want to make sure you size your especially your return line appropriate based on the amount of pumps that you're running. Uh, two pumps, you can pretty much get away with a dash six. If you're trying to run three pumps, I personally would not run anything. Um, I would run a 10 up and an eight back if you're trying to run three pumps on a regular basis. Uh, if it's an occasional use where you know you know how your your pumps are staged, your third pump might not come on that often, then you can probably get away with a six on the return and a ten for the feet. But if it's something where every time you take it out, it's full blast, you know the way how you and your engine management guys uh, set it up that the third pump is, or your second and third pump are coming on at like 20 psi, but you're always running more than 20 psi. Do yourself a favor and increase it, your return side to a dash eight so you won't load up the circuit from electrical load with the pumps and that's how a lot of guys end up burning up wall bros i mean they're great they're a high performance pump they're not a longevity pump they were designed for high output for a limited amount of time let's be honest uh, so if you get two years out of a set of these pumps for what you're paying for these pumps and the amount of power you can get in a compact size minimal amount of noise don't complain i mean the pumps should run maybe about 150 dollars each pump so i mean it's either that or go buy a single weld in and deal with the noise and spend 800 dollars and it is what it is and but this is a great option especially for a streetcar standpoint um now the last thing a lot of you I wonder, it's like, oh, well, what are the two lines, wires over here for? Well, these are actually for your float. I don't, I cut the connectors off just for visually so I could show it to you, get it off the car a lot easier, but normally they're right here. So you would basically cut those and reconnect these two so that you, your float assembly will still function. You still have enough room to plug in. Uh, like I said, it's a great unit. It's a unique design. Uh, pretty simple, straightforward, easy on the install, uh, and for the price point, it's it's a great option, man. It's go ahead, you guys can follow the links and order one whenever you're ready. Uh, we usually have them in stock, uh, so that's not a big deal. It might take me one or two days to get them assembled, but I do keep tons of parts uh, ready to go for all the fuel assemblies, um, and I get them assembled in a fair amount of time. They're all shipped out priority mail, so you get them in like two to three days once they go out. So even if it takes two days for me to build one and ship it, you're still getting it in a week. Uh, and thanks again.